So, all power, all power, power to live effective Christian life. Power not to live as a beggar. Power not to live a depressed life. Power not to live a life of misery, feeling cheated, you know, crying and smiling. The power is installed in us. When we understand what he has done in us, when we understand what we have, it's a matter of, you know, you wait. Sometimes your life will become an adventure. Right? And you say, Lord, where are we going now? This one you have started. Which one, which one you want? Why? Because you know, you know that you will overcome. You know that whatever you're going through, head or tail, you win in him. Why? Because the installed capacity is in you. All he wants to you to do is to begin to exercise the ability to produce, be it in marriage, you know, and you know, some I may say something a bit controversial. You know, the fact that you're a great cook doesn't mean your husband will love you. Now, it's good to cook, it's good to take care of your husband, be tender. But I'm, I'm saying something a bit extreme because of our cultural background. They say, Oh, you cook, you do this, you do that, it's okay. But it's not all. So, when you have the power of Marshall as a woman in marriage, to rule in your marriage as a wife, not as a husband, whether you know how to cook or not. In fact, I, I, I had seen it. My, I have a girlfriend. One day we went went to her house, you know, she made vegetable soup for her husband. She didn't wash the this thing. I couldn't eat that vegetable soup. The man came home and was eating that mm -hmm, tree, this your soup is well. Mm -hmm. I couldn't eat the soup. Because she had it. She she had the marshals. She feared the Lord. And then um, every her purpose in that home was to do the man good. So he took care of her limitations, which of course she was working at I hope I'm communicating this point. Not as though I'm saying, you know, you relax and do what you like. No. But all the things we emphasize, they don't, they, they, when, when there is the power to marry, it, a, a wife doesn't stay in a home because of the money. It doesn't stay in a home because of the money. There are rich men, their wives are running away. So it's not because a man is poor. The man needs the power of Mashal to rule over, he, over, her, over his wife, to govern, to direct, and bring her unto a beautiful bride, unto himself. These are powers that don't come. That is why before people get, start getting married, they are counseled. When you go into counseling room, the brethren are helping you to harness the spirits that will make you have the power to stay married and succeed in marriage. So to rule, have dominion. Now, there are, as I said, there are many words, you know, translated, um, uh, translated um, power. Another word translated power is a word, C-H-A-Y-I-L, you know. Um, and it is in reference to, you know, the father of um, of 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 uh, Saul the king, First Samuel nine one. He said, "Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zero, the son of Bekorath, the son of Aphia, a Benjamite." A mighty man of power. <laughs> he was a man of means. You know, a man of means. In other words, his resources made him a man of force. His resources made men available to him. So, 
it is a critical part of our lives. We need balance in this area. Now, this world is not for people who are still dealing with greed. You know, who see wealth as something to be grasped at all point. You know, you're ready to give up, you know, issues of sanctification, issues of loving the Lord because you want money. And it, that's not what. But in your work with the Lord, because there are installed capacities, you have the capacity to make wealth. Because he even said it, I give you the power to make wealth. So, what is he talking about? It means that he, he will, there is installed capacity inside of us to be people of wealth. How do you know that you are a person of wealth? One, he will give you the capacity to be a man of means, a woman of means. You could be selling akara. You could be selling bonjo. You could be writing papers. You could be anything, but it becomes a means. You could be a teacher. A means is a way. That is one. The question you ask yourself, am I a person of means? Do I have means? Is there a way in my life? You know, <clears throat> the, this is critical because you find that among us, among believers, there are four mindsets when issues of wealth come. There are those who have a beggarly mentality. You know, they are depending on uh, my uncle who is, they are depending on brother, they are depend it's time for school fees. And they need school fees, it's time to parent, and they need to parent, and all their mind, their mindset is a mindset of a beggar. Now, they are lovely brethren, just like Lazarus. The only problem is that they have wounds on their bodies, and dogs will always lick the wounds. They place themselves in a place where they are hot, knowingly or unknowingly. So, their eyes may be on brother X or sister Y, or, and the brother may not have. The person is hot. So, such people, you find them complaining in this church. They don't help people in this church. Nobody cares. In the, you have wounds all, of, all over you. And once you have wounds, you, the tendency to go back to the things you have forgotten, you have given up, is there. You may even start going back to your relatives whom you had, you know, made boast of to them. So that is a beggarly mentality. The Lord does not want it. If the person dies, he's going to Ab Abraham's bosom. Or, uh -huh, uh -huh. The person will be very, but you see, the person is always close to the corridors of power, but he never touches power. Hey! beggarly mentality. There are those they have a fraudulent mindset. They are brethren, but they are wire people. You know, in fact, uh, each time you're dealing with them, two plus two ends up into five. And they will do it mugu, 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 like that, you know. Uh -huh. After some time, nobody calls him a thief, calls him a fraudulent person, but when they say about money, they say, eh, be careful. You know, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> you know, you know, you have a fraudulent spirit. You know, you're a trickster. That way, you're not a person of means. Now, there are those who are diggers. You hear that uh, youth coppers are in 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 uh, Akampa or wherever they are. You are thinking of going to supply them with meat pie. You're digging. It may not give you all the money in the world that you're digging. Oh, that may not even be about digging. You're a sower. No, digging is more about, you know, people who, have, who are teachers. You know, the other day, the professors were on the road. <laughs> they are diggers. In many of them, among them, many of them, their means of income is on, you know, they lecture and at the end of the day they pay them based on ipsas and all that. There is nothing wrong with that. Digging is an honorable, every digger, every laborer is worthy of his wages. There is nothing wrong with that. 
But in the kingdom of God, in the principle of God, when it comes to resources, being a man of means, our Father wants us to become sowers and reapers. Get a means. So you could be a digger on the side. You find a means. Who knows? You may bring in something at five naira today. Tomorrow, it will become scarce. Is it profiteering? I don't know. But God can make a way for you. You could put in one yam, one tuber of yam, and the Lord chooses to multiply it. That, that was the story of my grandfather. You know, he went to church when they didn't want people to go to church. They were mocking him that he went to church. And growing up, I saw his yams. You know, he will plant the same size plot of land. His own will yield three times what the other people have. He will bring the, the newspapers he used to come and, you know, take. These are the things we have as believers. We have the capacity, you know. It's installed inside of us is that when we sow, we will reap. That is, the, that is what this power but this power is a power that, you know, we really need to cultivate. We really need to cultivate, first of all, by getting the right mindset. <clears throat> so when you have the right mindset, then you will develop means. Nothing so exotic, nothing so difficult. You know, just, he will guide you. So you develop the means. Now, as you develop the means, you begin to ask yourself, this thing, this means, am I multiplying? You assess yourself. <clears throat> it is also linked to another power. The power to fructify. It's another power. You know. As believers, we have it. We, it's installed in us. <clears throat> I don't know. You know, many t things have changed these days. But as youngsters in my community, they will come and give you <clears throat> a fowl, a chicken. You know, somebody who likes to come and give you a chicken. They could give five of you one one hen. Your own, in the next two weeks, will learn 13 eggs and hatch all of them. These are things, there are powers available to us. The power to fructify. That is the power to multiply. If we, if we are not seeing it, then we begin to ask, why is it not so? The, the challenge in many instances among us is that, okay, things will begin to fructify, but we don't know. The other thing about this power, you know, they call Chahil, is that you need an army. You need to defend the money. You need to defend the resources, whatever the resources be. If it be men, defend. If it be material things, defend. If it be cash, defend. What do I mean defend? I have seen situations, you know, a brother in the midst, way back, you know, he began to fructify, you know, he would get contracts there, yeah? <clears throat> then everybody would depend on him. He said, hey, yeah, he will give. Hey, yeah. It's good to give. But you need to defend and judge how to give. Sometimes, you may give in a way that you hinder the other person from coming into an estate the Lord requires for him. You need an army. You need, you need to defend the resources. Why do you have to defend it? Because what you have, you don't own. The Acts of Apostles. They, they possess things which they did not own. So when you are a man of means and you are in the midst of the house, the things that are coming to you, they are not your own. You don't use them to say, hey, I like uh, this person's phrase. I will dash her. I like uh, the other person. And you use it. If you do it that way, then you'll find, you find yourself manipulating the body of Christ with your resources. Because the defense of the wisdom of God is not there. And you, so you may find that God will tell you for a season, don't give. Gather. And then when there is a need, you give. So there are, I'm not prescribing anything. I'm only saying, I'm, I only have an understanding that there has to be, you have to gather. 
knowing that whatever you are having is not your own and you are accountable to him it is a capacity so that you will multiply and multiply and you'll never be an ever flowing stream onto the house you know and i believe i trust that this is an area god will bring us into understanding that will become a force you know it will become a force I read somewhere, I heard of a man of God who will raise people from the dead and then he will trek to the place. By where he's trekking, he'll be killing snake along the way. I said, God will help him to kill the snake. <laughs> no. God, these are installed capacities inside of us. And we need to focus on, you know, being people of means, being people who, who increase and multiply, being people who defend and of course, being people who live in virtue about what comes in. That, what, that the fact that you are fructifying and things are flowing, it does not mean you use it onto your flesh. There is a way you are giving, you are giving onto your flesh. So, it, it is also a challenge to learn how to give so that the body of Christ will be truly blessed. So, that is about... Um, you know the other type of power i i i, I have um, and then um, there is the power of you know the power of your call the power to deal with divination witchcraft you know, you know <laughs> many times the way once you when once our people hear witchcraft divination you know it's like unconsciously you see people carrying their hands hey do you say she's a witch witchcraft by the way is a work of the flesh <laughs> so anybody who can lie anybody who can live in immorality the person can also practice uh, witchcraft but it doesn't matter however the person may have developed himself in the negative there is installed capacity in us to deal with every power of sorcery witchcraft and divination hallelujah it is in us because um i have been around not too long but i've been around and i've seen brethren live in utter fear not as though there is no witchcraft but to go home they are petrified in the office they are petrified a lizard passes hey cockroach i'm not saying they're not real I'm not, I'm not belittling the experiences by any means, but I'm only pointing out at the installed capacity in us. So you go to the book of Numbers 22-38, and Balaam was hired to do all sorts, you know, taken to how many mount mountains, hills, seven hills. It might, I'm sure some of us, if we hear that, they have taken, gone to the hill for you. They <laughs> He, he went to the hills. He touched the highest power nodes in the negative spiritual, you know. But he did not succeed. Why did he not succeed? Because of the installed capacity in Israel that there is no enchantment against you. There is no divination against you. That is your installed capacity. That the power of witchcraft does not work and you will not suffer any witch. So it is so. So somebody will say, "Ah, oh, why is it that it worked?" I mean, in my understanding, and I am open to correction, there are two critical things one has to work against. You see, Balaam did not start off as, you know, as a diviner who was determined to go against the will of God. In fact, when he, if you read the scriptures, Balaam was interacting with God. But his God, his belly was his God. Uh, people say longer truth. So he will know the mind of God. And then um, Balak will say, go now, go now. I say, okay, let me go. Let me go. Whatever he says, I will say. Oh. <laughs> Why was he pushing God? At a point, God got angry with him and sent his angel. And you know, you know the story. So, it's important. If you do not want the power of sorcery, witchcraft, and divination to work on you, deal with, you know, your belly. Deal with the issues of the flesh. 
you know. Don't let, never let monetary gain be at the root of your actions with anybody. There are too many scriptures for that. I, I just want to, you know, convey. There are too many scriptures for that. Your belly must not be your God. What you will gain in dealing with the people of God must not be your motivating factor. Once that is in you, then you're a potential witch. No matter what you have, what you're seeing, no matter what you're preaching, you can be a diviner. It's not for they, they, they didn't come in. Balaam didn't come in as an unbeliever. He says when he's falling asleep, his eyes are open and he's seeing God. So he was he was an anointed, empowered man. That is one. Then, when we as we deal with the issue of greed, avarice, you know, which is as idolatry, according to the word of God, then we will now also deal with the issue of the lust of the flesh. The installed capacity is there. And the what stops this installed capacity from coming forth? Check out, it is around the issue of immorality. That is why, you know, when people have understanding, so you find that, you know, you cannot be tempted. If, if you are tempted with sex, for instance, you go back to God and say, is it, is it time for me to die? <laughs> oh, ha. Ah. So any woman that tempts you, or man that tempts you say, oh, so this is my death, eh? Because it is an exposure. It exposes one to the marauding spirits of wickedness that will do what even a diviner cannot do. So, roundabout is holiness. Holiness is not, uh, it in, you know, it's not, uh, I don't want to get into the other parts, but holiness is that your mind, your thoughts, your body unto the Lord. You know, certain things, you, you know, around you, certain perimeter, you know, perimeters, there are, like the scripture says, certain things cannot be mentioned. Uh -huh. So, uh, so, uh, uh, in fact, severally, severally, when people get immoral, they expose their spouses to marauding spirits, you know. So, when you understand that is an exposure, it's not something. So that is the power of um, Yakov. It does not have any hold over us. We have the, you know, there is a community that sings. It's near. They are near Sister Nansu's place. They are an ordinary. They, they, are, they will tell you that if it is sacrifice, it doesn't affect us. If it is whatever it is, it will not. How much more us? The installed capacity is there to deal with it. Praise the Lord. So, um, all power, all power. You know, I will not go into the dynamics, the dynamic power of God to change things. That one we are familiar with it, you know. But as I as I mentioned earlier on, in them um, somebody may have the power to raise the dead, and he's walking around begging bread. There should be the power to make wealth, to feed your home. It's installed inside of us. If you give it up, Paul gave. Paul said, you know, I give it up. He gave up. He didn't. He didn't become poor because he couldn't walk. He all. He, it was a. You know. It was a boasting part in his walk. He fed everybody around him. He didn't depend on anybody. Willingly, for the sake of the gospel, he didn't want to go into. So. So there are different kinds of power. You know the word power. I said earlier on. You know there are about eighteen words. You know, there is the, I've mentioned many, but let me mention the ones that, um, you know, I, and there is the power to resist and to stand. It's T at Kuma. 
T with the at. I don't know how to pronounce it. There is the power for greatness. The power to do mighty things. Dula. There is the power to dominate over your enemies as the children of God, as the children of Israel did in the book of Esther, against all odds. They dominated. The enemy had an upper hand. They had the power to resist and they dominated. There is the power to have utterance. You say where the word of the king is, there is power. Shilton is called. That when you speak one word, it has impact. Because it is the word of a king. God will help us. That is why Paul prayed for utterance. You know. You also need to be aware that there is the power of evil to spread. Aritz. That is what we are experiencing in Nigeria. The power of is it is evil, you know. Evil is spreading. But when we develop our own power to resist, evil is stayed at bay. Hallelujah. There is the power of Tatsuma. This is the type of power that deals with breaking the bones of your enemy. Sometimes structures are set up, strengthened in different places. It's like, how do we handle this one? There is a power available to the church, available to Israel of God, to break the power of the enemy. There is the power of positiveness, tokef, to overpower, to prevail. Daniel had it. He ruled, he oversaw two or three kingdoms. On his own terms. Hey, I, I, you know, they say Christians should not go into politics. Hey, you go to I'm sorry. I'm not, I don't think I have the, but I know that if people are coming, who will walk in the power of Tokev? Positive. Anything you throw at them doesn't stand. You, the only way you can find fault in them is with their God, in the worship of their God. And all you do, take them into the lion's den. Take them through the fire. They will prevail. And they will become people of relevance. You will need them. You will begin to see signs. Take it, take it. And you say, go and call me. It, people who don't know, there are people who will tell them, I, I, you know, 30 years ago, there used to be a woman. There used to be a man. He will bring us to that level. For too long we have left things and, you know, pontificated on things. But I am saying from the scriptures that Tokef is a power available to Israel of God, you know. There is the power to constrain evil, evil spirits. That is why when Jesus appeared on the scene, it wasn't common. It wasn't to constrain evil spirits. But in Igbo language, we are watching more. We should not be afraid of spirits. He has given us power to deal with all the powers of the enemy. So what is the nature of that? Where is it coming from? We have the power of Shalit. And as I said, we have the power to fructify, the power to bear, to conceive, the power to bring about increase, the power to sow, yield. These are powers available to us. We have the power to spread. Sennacherib had the power to spread. Memshela. He kept on. In fact, he came to Israel and told them, It is your God that gave me the <laughs> Oh, may the Lord return unto us the Memshela that we will, we will conquer and conquer and conquer and nothing can stand between, you know, before us. So these are powers that are available to us as the church, as individuals, as a group, as we begin to, in them, my understanding is that, you know, there are spirits that accompany, you know, certain kinds of powers. You know, if you want to, if you want to walk in the strength of, um, like breaking all bones, you need a spirit of boldness. You know, you need a spirit of sound mind. There are spirits, all those spirits mentioned, 
they are forces. They are the angels behind them and bring to us, you know, and and they make things happen in our lives. You know, the, that understanding that you are not alone. Just as he will command angels, you through him, you will tell angels where to, you know, you, you tell situations to change. You know, I'm not talking about, you know, the people who deal with angels. I, no, no, I'm not, I, I hope I, I have not mixed that up. Through him, we can do our things, you know. So these are aspects of power. You know, there is, there is the power of us, the DNA, your position. The, your position. You know, you may be the first to have gotten born again in your family. You may be the first, you may be the oldest. It is in your DNA. You are a Reuben. You have the mind. You are the beginning of strength. You have the excellency and dignity. You have the as. It is in your DNA. Be, be careful. Your father's wife is not for your satisfaction. That is what takes away certain powers from the church, from the people who deal with the church carelessly. So God will help us you know, to begin to yeah, address these issues going individually, depending on where one feels, you know, you understand that the power is there, and then you have to harness it. You need to desire, and when you receive, believe, and you will receive it, and you begin to manifest. And if it's not enough, you go from one level to another. We are not born powerless. We are born kings, we are born priests, we are born prophets. When we begin to walk in our priestly ordination, in our priestly calling, oh, we even have the power of an endless life. The priesthood we belong to is the priesthood of an endless life because that is the good message we have. The good message is that we shall not die. We shall not die. The power of the endless of endless life is at work. That is what, you know, what, what is, that is the message of the ages. Why is it the good news? The good news is that you will not die. You say, hey, but uh, brother X died, sister X died. Okay, they died. But the word of God says that we shall not die. I, I cling to it. He will make it clearer to me. There are, there are resources available to us embedded installed inside of me installed inside of us as we turn to him and behold him he'll begin to show us who we are praise the lord <laughs>